Is the world getting better or is it getting worse? Do you think it's getting better? Okay, this man here. Anyone else? The girls have come out jaded. Do you think the world is getting better or worse? What do you think? Worse? You think it's worse? Okay, so we've got three for worse, one for better. Any more? Any more? I'm asking you today, people of Lancaster, do you think the world is getting better or worse? I think most people, when they stick on the news, would say the world is getting worse. Do you agree with that? When we, when we look at what's going on in Ukraine, do we think the world's getting better or worse? When we look at um, all the marches that have gone on around the world in America, is the world getting better or worse? When we look at, you know, uh, all around us and we hear about the pandemics and all these different things, is the world getting better or is it getting worse? It's a big question, isn't it? Now, why do I ask you that question? I'll tell you why. If I go into a science lesson in any school around this country, what word will I hear the most in science at school in this, in this world? Evolution. And what does evolution say? Things get better with time, don't they? So my question to you is, if the world is getting worse, why is it when we go on the streets, we see more people who want to rob you? Why is it when we go on the streets, we, we see more pain, more suffering? You might say, God doesn't know a thing about you. Do you know the Bible says that God knows the very numbers of hairs that are on your head? Now, why, you might be thinking, why is a bald guy talking to me about hair on, on my head today? You know, what, what relevance has that got? But it, it just proves the point, doesn't it? God knows everything about you. Did you know this? God loves you. There's no one in this world today, I don't care who you are, where you're from today in Lancaster, there's no one here today who can say that no one loves me. Because God loves you. Just look at the cross. Look at the crown of thorns that Jesus had in his skull. Look at the nails through his hands and his feet. He was spat on, he was mocked. He, he had his beard plucked out and there on the cross he died the most ugly death for you because he loved you. Now, I know I'm trying to sort of talk to you and build a bit of rapport here, but I don't want to offend anyone, but did you know this as well? Every single person in Lancaster today has a massive problem. Maybe you're saying, oh, you don't know my problem, but I'm telling you, everyone has a massive problem. You've actually got two problems. Here's the first one. You're a sinner. Did you know you're a sinner? Did you know the man standing in front of you right now is a sinner? Here's a question for you. I'm a married man. Do you think that I've ever made my wife cry before. Nod your head if you think I've made my wife cry before. You think I have? I have actually, okay? Now, you see these eyes. Everyone look at my nice blue eyes. Imagine everything I've ever seen in my life was put on this board. Would I be embarrassed? Would I be ashamed of anything I've ever looked at? I would. Now, I know I'm a dweeb. I know many of you, if you hit me in the face, I'd fall straight to the floor. But you see these fists here? Do you think I've ever punched anyone with these fists before? I have actually, but now ask me this question, you ask it me, am I going to heaven? I am, not because I'm a good person, as you see I'm not, but because there are two types of people that get into heaven, perfect people and forgiven people. Now is there anyone here today in Lancaster who can raise their hand and say, I am a perfect man, I am a perfect woman, I've never done anything wrong. We can't, can we? Because that first problem, we're all sinners. Here's the second problem for you. Every single one of you, here's a shocking statistic that I bet you've never thought about. Are you ready for this? This is, this is going to blow your brains out. Are you ready for this shocking statistic? 10 out of 10 people die. Is that right or is it wrong? I see some people laughing. You don't want to give too much attention to the street preacher because you know I'll pull you in here. But it's true, isn't it? 10 out of 10 people die. Here's another one for you. 150,000 people die every day. And I bet you every single one of them, they had plans for next week. I'm going to the dentist, I'm going to my grandma's house, I'm going to go to Tesco, and that's it. Into eternity. Two problems you and I have got. We're both sinners, and we're both going to die. But here is the hope. I know a man who can take you, who can take your problem of sin, and delete it, get rid of it, erase it, it's gone no more. Just like we've got the river loon there. If you get, I don't know, a load of rubbish, and you throw it in the river loon, it'll be washed away and it's gone forever. Did you know the blood of Jesus Christ can wash your sins away? There is a river of forgiveness and that blood can get rid of your sins, it can be gone forevermore. Here's the second problem that you heard. Death, okay? Did you know the Lord Jesus Christ, the man Christ can beat your grave? That's pretty amazing. Do you think that's true? The man Jesus Christ can beat your grave. Now, I don't know you personally, but imagine this happened. Imagine now, 
you die. Okay, you die today. I hope it doesn't, but imagine you die. If in three days' time you came back from the dead and said, I've beaten the grave, do you not know think people would pay attention to what you've got to say? Do you not know think people would say, that's pretty impressive. This man, this woman, has risen from the dead. So if we would take notice of anyone who's risen from the dead, why is it so many people walk past the Lord Jesus Christ who says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man can come to the Father except through me. He says, I'll beat your grave, I'll give you eternal life. And it's all you have to do is come and receive him. Why do you ignore him? Why is it that most churches today are empty? Why is it that if you've got a Bible at home, most probably there's a lot of dust on it? Why is it that you don't want to consider this amazing gift of eternal life? It's free and Jesus died for you. Only you can answer that question. I can't answer it for you. Only you can decide why is it I'm rejecting Jesus who loved me, who died on that cross. Because he welcomes all. He opens his arms and says, come. But there is a day, now listen to this warning. There is a day when mercy is cut off. There is a day, did you know that there are people in hell who pray but no one answers? There's a day when it's all finished and it's too late. The Bible says it is appointed for man once to die and after that the judgment. And you need to know that when you face God, have you received the Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, who can wash away your sins and forgive you? Or have you said, it's okay, I'm alright on my own? It'd be very foolish for any man to jump out of a plane without a parachute. And likewise, it'd be very, very foolish for any of you to leave planet Earth without the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who can rescue you and beat your grave. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Uh, come and have a chat to us if you want to know more.